the risk through extinction from AI is similar to pandemics and nuclear war. This was a statement by Sam Oldman, the founder of OpenAI and ChatGPT, and Bill Gates. Similar to pandemics and nuclear war. My first touch points with AI were about 10 years ago when my brother, sitting in the audience, and doing his doctor degree in informatics, uh, showed me a machine that can identify cancer, genetic disorders, tumors, just by looking at an image where a human might not even see the potential threat. I was positively amazed. Who in this room already used the famous ChatGPT? Yes, I expected that one. Um, but how was it? Was it friendly? Was it nice? Helpful? I mean, it even says, please, thank you. It asks for apologies. Sometimes we humans are not even that friendly, at least some of us. AI is powerful, and AI is already integrated in our society. If you have your mobile phone with you, the chances are very high that you interact with artificial intelligence on a daily basis. But are you afraid of your mobile phones? AI is here to simplify things, to make them more efficient. But with every task, that, the get, that gets simplified, one job is being transformed, or maybe it gets completely obsolete. So it's a dilemma between cre increasing technology that is increasing efficiency while threatening our daily life of work. And AI might not end the world, but it will end the world as we know it. And Nick Bostrom said machine intelligence will be the last inventions we humans will ever need to make. So imagine a robot that creates new ways of art, new ways of music, a robot that creates new medicine and find ways to stop the pollution. An artificial intelligence that might fix the problems on our Earth to save our blue planet. We humans, we sometimes forget to learn from the mistakes we make. But at one point, it will be too late. But maybe then, maybe then, a machine who is faster, cleverer, and better than us, will still be able to fix the world as we know it. And this idea, this idea also frightens people, because what frightens us most is the loss of our purpose. And according to a study from Goldman Sachs, 37% of architecture and engineering 44% of legal jobs and 46% of administration and office jobs will be automated in the next few years through artificial intelligence. But this didn't happen the first time. It happened many times. You just need to look back at the writing machine that got invented or one of the four industrial revolutions where a machine got implemented the very first time in manufacturing companies. And this machine replaced maybe 44, 46, or even more percentage of the manufacturing companies. But when we look at a manufacturing company 
right now, what do we see? We see increasement of efficiency and we see a huge gap of workforces, even though half of them got already replaced. So the question is, a world where we have no more jobs. Perhaps this will be reality. But is it a bad thing? Think about it. Fifty-two percent, according to a study of the UKG, say that they would not recommend their job to their children. And 38% would not even recommend their job to their worst enemies. I don't know what you wish your worst enemies. I wish my worst enemies different things than my job. But you see, the true essence of work is not about doing routine tasks. It's not about calculating numbers. It's about innovation, about problem solving, about creativity and about human interaction. Artificial intelligence. Like for many years from now, we worked according to the Pareto principle. Maybe some of you know it. 20% input leads to 80% output. But isn't it time that we maybe deliver 100% again? We also promise our customers that we walk the extra mile, that we give 110%. But be honest, did you ever have time to walk the extra mile? And when I order some service with our companies, I expect 110%. So imagine you are one of the first ones who can finally walk the extra mile again and keep the promise you make. Artificial intelligence um, is often connected with a fast change. And every time when we make a fast change, we come into the state of a future shock by Toffler. And the future shock is not more and not less than something where the technology changes faster then we humans can keep up with it. And this phenomenon leads to stress, anxiety, and fear. And just two weeks ago, the CEO of NVIDIA said that coding will be dead because of artificial intelligence. And at least in my youth time, uh, software engineers, coders, they, it was the one and single job that, we'll never, that we will never get rid of. We need codings, we need algorithms, we need them for every tool, for every software, for every machine. So how can coding be dead if we need them for every machine? But at the end, coding is just a different language. And as we all know, when we think back at ChatGPT, it masters languages pretty well. So a future where AI and humans are in synergy is not easy. It needs planning. It needs preparations. And it needs the openness towards a future where we will never stop learning. And the true strength of AI lies not in replacing us, but by giving us the freedom and focus on being human again. And let's think back a few generations, a lot of generations, where the first humans made paintings in the cave walls to transfer their knowledge to the next generation. And think about your parents about your grandparents or your great-grandparents, everything they taught us, all the knowledge they gave to the next generation. They taught us how to build streets, 
how to build houses, how to build cars. They even showed us how to build artificial intelligence. But they also showed us how to walk, how to talk, how to communicate, how to integrate ourselves in society and how to be human. And they taught, they gave us their knowledge with one single purpose. And this purpose was to make our lives a little bit easier. So think of AI as another generation where we need to learn how to talk to the artificial intelligence, where we integrate artificial intelligence in our lives, in our routines, in our society, so that it makes our lives just a little bit easier. Think of artificial intelligence as a digital assistant that does the work for us so that we can focus on what matters most. There is no need to master artificial intelligence tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. Artificial intelligence will also not take all of our jobs tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. But everything is a process. And during this process, we need to stay flexible and open-minded. And in 20 years from now, we don't know how the world or the job market will look like. No one does. But let's not be afraid. Let's take the advantage of the new technology just to make our lives a little bit easier. Artificial intelligence is revolutionizing the world. And maybe it's time to think differently. Maybe we should think about who we are, what we do, and how we fulfill our jobs. We should go towards a future where we can focus on creativity, where we can focus on being human. And together, let's make this double-edged sword into a tool that carves a future that is not about living, but about making a life worth living. A future with artificial intelligence where human becomes normal again. Thank you very much.